Hello lovelies, welcome back to my channel. So today I am talking about the world's oldest vintage beauty products that you can still buy today. And if you're new to my channel, hello and welcome. My name is Laura. This is a channel where I talk about all things vintage fashion and beauty. So if you love those things, please don't forget to hit the big red button below and subscribe. Also, I started a new Instagram account for this channel. It's called Dahlia's in the Attic. So please don't forget to head over to Instagram and follow me on there. I also link that below. All right, let's jump right in and talk about the world's oldest beauty products that you can still buy today. So the first product on the list is from 1533. It is actually a perfume called Santa Maria Novella Aqua Della Regina. I'm sure the pronunciation on that isn't entirely correct. I wanted to buy the perfume online, but it was a few hundred dollars, so I kind of had to draw the line there, and I ended up buying a bar of soap from them, just so I could have something to show you. And this scent was created in 1533 for Catherine de' Medici, um, with her, for her marriage to Henry II, who was the King of France at the time. And this is still one of their best-selling fragrances today, and it is made with rose water, it's a very fresh floral scent. Um, the soap that I have is also a rose-based soap and it smells incredible. It, de it was definitely on the pricier side, mainly because of the shipping, because I had to ship it all the way over from Italy. But I'm excited to try it and I just wanted something from the list and I have a feeling the soap is also a very old. So the first product is from 1533. The next product on the list is from 1709, and this is another cologne. It's called Farina, and this is a fragrance that was used for people, back in the day, people didn't bathe that often, so it was a way to kind of get rid of people's poor and foul-smelling body odor. And an Italian wanted to capture the sensory soul of his hometown while living in Germany. And his exact words in a letter to his brother are, I have found a fragrance that reminds me of an Italian spring morning of mountain daffodils orange and orange blossoms after the rain. So this is a really nice fresh fragrance. It has essential oils of lemon, bergamot, tangerine, orange, neroli, and grapefruit married with dashes of tobacco. Lavender, Jasmine, Thyme, and Rosemary. This was a very expensive fragrance from 1709. I happened to find a small little bottle on eBay, but it's very fresh. I quite like it and I can see how it would be very refreshing compared to heavier colognes of the time. And the next item on the list is Yardley London Lavender Soap, and this soap has been around since 1770. In fact, records show that even though the company was officially founded in 1770, its story actually began in the 1600s when King Charles I granted a young man the concession to supply all the soap for the city of London. So the key ingredient in this soap is lavender, which has very soothing properties. And this lavender is grown still for Yardley of London in the south of England. And the brand is still popular today and I just Personally, I love the smell of lavender. It's so relaxing and refreshing, and I just love how old this soap is, and you can buy it almost anywhere, at least where I live. And the next product on the list is another soap brand. This is Pear Soap, and it is from 1807. So Pear Soap was founded by Andrew Pears in 1789 as a barber studio in Soho, London. Pears was originally reserved for a very exclusive set of peers and nobles. In 1807 came the world's first transparent soap bar, which was initially billed as an English complexion soap due to its ultra-gentle formula comprising of glycerin and other natural products. It took three months to make, and it still does, and it won the prize for soap at the Great Expedition in 1851. And the next item on the list is Tyre's Original Witch Hazel, and this one is from 1847. I use this facial toner every day. I personally love the rose petal one because it smells incredible and I just love roses. And I love that it has doesn't have alcohol in it so it doesn't dry out your skin and it's really good for removing makeup. So this is one of my go-to toners. Next one on the list is from 1872 and this is another fragrance called Penhaligon's Hammond Bouquet. 
And this fragrance has received several royal warrants. So the royal family has worn this perfume throughout history and I just love the vintage bottle as well. And it was founded by William Henry Paligon. He was a Cornish barber who moved to London and set up a shop in the late 1860s. His first fragrance was Hammond Bouquet and this is the one that I have here. And it was inspired by the heavy aromas from the Turkish bath next door. What also is interesting is the bottle has basically not been changed since it was founded in 1872. And I just love how vintage the bottle is. It definitely has a Victorian look to it. And the red ribbon is kind of an ode to Queen Victoria of England. The next product on the list is a Vaseline. This one is from 1872. And apparently Vaseline was discovered by Robert Cheesebro when he was actually pros prospecting for oil in Pennsylvania. And then there's an observation that the oil rig workers started using rod wax. And this is the drill resu residue from the oil rig. And it was used to heal cuts and minor burns. And this kind of kind of caught the chemist's imagination. And then he spent the better part of a decade refining the rod wax to the clear white petroleum jelly that it is today called Vaseline. And the next one on the list is Listerine. And this was from 1879. And this one was developed by a Missouri chemist, Joseph Lawrence, and he used it as a surgical anti antiseptic. And the Listerine was named after Baron Joseph Lister, who was a pioneer of antiseptic surgery. Over the years, the combination of menthol, thyme, eucalyptus, and wintergreen has been used for purposes ranging from gonorrhea, bathing surgical wounds, treating sore throats, soothing insect bites. It's also used for dandruff and cleaning the floor, apparently. However, Listerine took its true stride in 1895 when it caught the attention of dentists. They noticed that it helped get rid of bad breath and it was the first over-the-counter mouthwash to be sold without a prescription. And today the 138 year old liquid remains the oldest product in the Johnson & Johnson portfolio. The next item on the list is another soap company, Ivory Soap. And Ivory Soap is from 1879. And this was founded by the chemist James Gamble of Procter & Gamble. So he actually created the world's first floating soap by adding extra whipped air into the soap. So this is kind of interesting. So the soap doesn't get lost in the bathtub and sinks to the bottom. And I actually didn't know that. And apparently it is 99.44% pure. And the next item on the list is from 1892. And this is Smith's Rosebud Salve. I absolutely love this lip balm. I love the vintage looking container with the roses on the side and the color pink. It just works really well on my lips. So Dr. G.F. Smith created this salve as a way for to help heal chapped lips, razor burns, and diaper rash. So apparently this one, it's not only for your lips, it's very multi-purpose. I think most people use it for their lips, but back in the day, they used to use it for diaper rash as well as burns. The next item is from 1897 and this is Shisto Uterman and this is kind of a facial toner and this was founded in Tokyo. And the brand's first beauty product is a soften softening lotion called Uterman, which was launched in 1897 and you can still buy this lotion today. I have it right here. I love the vintage bottle and it is the original pack packaging and you just it looks so unique with the red and I'm really excited to try it and use it as a toner and I just think it's incredible that you can still buy this one today. And this one is from 1897. Well, the next on the list is Pond's Cold Cream from 1907, but it does however date back to 1846 when the pharmacist Perrin T. Pond extracted a healing witch hazel extract which you use for healing small cuts, rashes, and burns. And I love this cold cream. I use it almost every day and it just works so well at removing makeup. It's such a classic and it keeps my skin moisturized afterwards. So no wonder it's still around today. And the next item on the list is Noxema from 1914. And this one was invented in Maryland and it's kind of used as a greaseless cold cream 
mainly as a pain reliever. People would use it when they had really bad sunburns. I saw Vantage ads showing people that are really sunburned and they use it all over the body to heal that. It's really nice on the face. It's also good for removing makeup as well as chapped irritated skin and, and people also use it to treat acne. You can use it as a mask or a spot treatment. I personally don't like it as a makeup remover because I tried it around my eyes and it burned them but I definitely recommend it as a good spot treatment for acne and to soothe your skin if it's burned. A lot of people also left it on overnight as one of the original sleeping masks so I'll have to try that and see how that goes. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you've tried any of these products. I would love to know in your comments below. All right, I'll see you guys again soon. Bye.